welcome to this week's piece. So this is a little vintage table that belonged to my grandmother. It is now going into one of my little cousin's bedrooms. So we are going to revamp this and have it fit in a little more with her decor. So to start off this piece, I'm just going to strip it. Um, I am using citrus strip. This is not my most favorite stripper, so um, bear that in mind if you usually pick things up because I like them. Uh, this is just what I had at the time. So um, it worked decently like it always does. It's always just kind of average in my head. So um, I do like that you can be indoors with it and it's not super stinky. So that's the one thing that it has going for it. This paint was also already chipping off in a ton of different areas, so it wasn't an extremely hard finish to get off. I just wanted to use stripper because of the spindled legs and everything, which just makes things a lot easier. Because as you can see, you can use the scraper for the flat surfaces, but you can also go in with um, brushes and kind of scratchy rags to go in and get things out of the turned legs and any detail spaces. So. Stripper was just kind of an easier way here. And of course you still have to sand, but it'll be quite a bit less sanding now. Um, this scraper here that I have, it's like a multi-tool scraper and it has a curved surface on the edge. I do recommend those when you're going around the edges. They help so much. So if you can find one of these, I actually got this one at the dollar store. So you don't even have to look hard for them. They just have them and they have like the little round cutout on the side of it. And it does help for going around those rounded surfaces like that. So here I have a Scotch-Brite pad and you can find these like a whole pack of them at again the dollar store because this is going to have to get thrown away. I will never use it again for anything else. It gets so gunked up with the stripper but like I said it is really nice to be able to get it and kind of scratch out the paint out of all those little grooves and everything. So it's it's pretty convenient and nice that they're just kind of not one of the huge expenses that you have to toss. Now, since I knew the stripper wasn't going to do a perfect job and I'm going to have to go in and sand anyways, it was more convenient for me to use the stripper while the legs were still on, but sanding is much easier with the legs off for me. So I'm taking those off and getting everything sanded down. And of course, as I was sanding, I found this big kind of gouge in the wood. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill that with some wood filler. And then once that dries, it'll get sanded back with everything else. That was really the only thing that needed a uh, repair on this piece. Now to make this specifically for my cousin, she is very much into horses. She is an avid rider. Um, she's very good at it. And so this was the print that I wanted to do on her tabletop. Um, if you want a solid background and you want everything to pop out, you're going to want to do a light base like um, white or maybe a, a soft gray or something like that. I actually wanted the grain to come through on this, so I opted to just leave it wood and then let the grain kind of show through because this is a lighter wood. So I'd still be able to see the print, but then also get some of those grain lines underneath, which I think just look really pretty through the horses. But if you didn't want that, you could, again, just do white underneath and you'd have a uh, really just bright vivid print to apply my decoupage paper for these big sheets like this i have found it quite a bit easier if i spray the paper first and the background just a little bit and then i will go ahead and add my poly to the background and then place the paper on top it just kind of helps everything move out and you get less wrinkles that way 
I'm never too terribly concerned about wrinkles because I think that it just kind of adds character, but most of my pieces aren't like that perfect pristine finish. I like some texture, I like variations in color, so that's just kind of my style. So once I get the poly underneath, I do use the brush and help smooth it out when I'm adding poly over the top of the image as well. Um, this piece in particular, I got off of Zazzle, so you can find this print on Zazzle.com. This is Colonial from Sam Ann. This is a water-based stain. I've actually come to really enjoy this. I have several colors from them now, and, and I really like them. So the only reason I'm using this is because there's quite a few variations in the wood on the legs. So this is very similar to the color that the wood already is, but it's going to help match it a little bit more and get everything kind of evened out and toned out. So I do this while I'm waiting for the decoupage paper to dry, and then once I'm waiting for the stain to dry, I can go back to the decoupage paper and finish working on that. So once that is fully dry, and you do want to make sure that your decoupage paper is fully dry, you can go in with some sandpaper and you can start cleaning up the edges. So this is a rounded top. It doesn't give me a very sharp edge, so I have to be just a little more careful going around this. But generally, if you have a sharp edge, you get a really, really clean cut with sandpaper. Um, and some of my edges, you'll see me working a little harder because they actually were placed down with the poly. So I actually have to sand them off the wood, which is actually good. It means it adhered really well. But of course, I just don't want it going around the edge. So I'm just cleaning that up and then the rest will get painted in. Now it's going to be easier for me to paint along the top with the legs on it just because it brings it back up to height for me. So that's why I'm just going to attach the legs again and get them put on. So usually I start with a few base colors that I pulled from the paper. In this case, I have Iron Gate, I have Blackboard, I have Woodland Harbor, and then I have Dark Khaki. So these are just colors that I looked at the paper and was like, I think these will do. And then that's not to say that I won't change things later on or alter things. It just means that this gives me a starting place and I can always add more or take them away as I go. 
So I kind of pick my mid-tone and work from there and then kind of add things together and mix and blend and do whatever I think that I need to make this happen. So this paper has a lot of striations, especially because it has the wood grain showing through. So that's kind of how I want to put on the colors. And I'm using a chip brush because this actually leaves almost kind of like that swoopy, it's not a very clean looking brush. So it kind of gives that swoopy, liney, kind of textury look that a painting would and that you'd get from wood grain. So that's why I'm doing it this. And again, this is just the base and where I'm starting out and trying to figure out where I need to go from here. So it doesn't matter if it doesn't look great right to begin with. It gives me a starting point to figure out where I need to go from here. Now I always paint over my paper. If you don't paint over your paper, it looks like two separate parts and you want the whole thing to be cohesive. So I always bring my paint down over my paper as far down as I can possibly make it. And then you can always go back with a rag and clean up. Like the ears I don't want covered of the horses. So I'm covering them right now, but then I can just take a rag and kind of clean it up and get the ears kind of let out again. And then I can even paint back over them which I do a little bit later. So I'm just kind of working with it and seeing what I like and it's just paint. We can always fix it. It's just not that big of a deal. These bottom parts are kind of the funnest part for me because it's actually like continuing the legs down around the pieces and fading those out. So those are almost perfect. And I didn't have to make a lot of adjustments on these parts because I had the colors pretty close there and they went really, really smoothly going around the bottom edge. However, things were looking a little bit too cool and I realized I had to add quite a bit of warmth to this. So I busted out some bright orange. This is like pumpkin orange. And once you mix it with everything, it was like the perfect tone to add to all the other colors to help it meld with the paper. And you can see I do a combination of brushing, stippling, I use my fingers a lot. I do whatever it takes to kind of make the texture of the paint look the same as the image that I'm applying. Once I get it where I like it, I'm just gonna go in with my top coat. It will get about three different layers because this will be a well-used table in a child's room. I wanna make sure that it is super protected. So three layers it is. And then it will also get wax at the end, but you guys know I always wax my pieces that have extra traffic.
Now the middle portion gets something a lot easier. It's just going to be the iron gate and then I'm going to add some of the khaki color and I'm just going to swirl it in. So nothing crazy, but I just can't do a simple paint job. So it's got to be some swirly actions. So while the paint is still wet, I will mist it with a little bit of water and then add a little bit of the khaki in just kind of stippling motions. And then that's when I just swirl it in and it just fades out, blends out, softens out the gray and gives it a little more something. Between coats of the top coat, I just go in with a worn out little sanding pad. This was 220 originally, it's probably a little closer to 300 now, but it just kind of smooths out the finish and lets the next coat go on very nicely. And then after I get this coat on, I will just do the entirety of the piece with the top coat and this little guy's done. daughter's room with it so um, obviously the green paint wouldn't suit their needs but they wanted to keep it and have it as a treasure because it was my grandmother's so we did she is an avid avid horse rider she's excellent and does all kinds of shows and everything and so I thought this would be kind of just the perfect print for her and have it go into our room. They do have a very kind of country chic decor in their house. So I kept the woods on here, the raw natural wood. I added a little bit, I did do the stain, but it's a very kind of like just a tint over the top of this maple here. And so it still looks very natural. It's a little lighter than the other woods that they have in their house, but I think it will flow because I wanted to keep this pretty close to the original tone. And then the grays are just a good neutral base to go with the rest of her stuff. And then obviously the browns kind of go with 
everything. So I'm hoping that they absolutely love this. They haven't seen it yet. I'm excited to show them. They know, well, my I should say my aunt knows about the print. She was very excited about that. So yeah, I think it turned out lovely. I love all the swirls you guys know. I just can't do so bad at just a plain paint job. So this was something just a little bit elevated, a little more fun than just plain. It has, still has like my, my swirly goodness of all the things. And then of course the blended decoupage paper, which you gotta blend them. So I hope you enjoyed this. I just, I mean, I had a lot of fun with it, even though it was a pretty small, simple task. It was still fun to kind of take apart and redo and think about my grandma when I did it. So it was good. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.